Welcome guys, we are in Kidminster at the Flat Earth Conference 2019 and we have just interviewed Mark Ma Sargent. And Mark Sargent is the head of the Flat Earth Society. I'm not, I'm not sure they're organised enough to have a society. <laughs> I think they're just like random floating figureheads. Well, okay, but he is the figurehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's flown in from the States just for this conference. Yeah. And just might, for us. Yeah, just, well, just, to interview, <laughs> just to be interviewed by us. If anyone asks, we are journalists. Yeah. We're journalists? Of course. This we're, is the gold standard of journalism. Well, we're, are we going to get our Pulitzer Prize for this? Of course, of, of course. course. <laughs> the Pulitzer Prize is a conspiracy. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Sure. Everything is a conspiracy. Everything. Well, uh, well NASA. NASA. Um, everything is an illusion, but the philosophy of nihilism and illusion is a conspiracy. <laughs> uh, just to uh, know Flat Earth uh, referred to it in that beautiful terminology. <laughs> are you calling me a globe head? You are definitely a globe head. Actually, no, I'm the globe head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just for reference, Ilias is definitely a flat earther. <laughs> so we need to <laughs> I'm, I'm bear uh, that in mind. I'm, uh, yeah. what is it? Uh, spherically challenged? Spherically, or like, yeah. spherically challenged. Or like non-binary, <laughs> like what is it? Uh, geometrically non-binary. <laughs> um, so I think it's important to know that we, Ilias and I both, exist in a space where we're happy to believe in a world that the Earth is not as we perceive it to be. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we think it's flat. But we were very happy or to... Or that we don't believe it's round. Yes, exactly. We just it's think just there might like... be more than that meets the eye. Yeah, yeah. That there's still places science could go or we could... Yeah. Illusions could be uncovered. Yeah. But in our interview, we do definitely give Mark the space to talk us through the flat Earth yeah. theory and some of his ideas around it. But I don't know if, if he's the actual voice of the movement. Because a lot of them seem to have differing views. Yeah. And, it's, and different models, different views. Yeah. I think, I think his... There is, there's, a, there's a lot of people who have a certain... Um, I don't know if I would call it scientific, but it's, like, it's definitely a scientific grounded rationale to disprove um, the globe. The globe. Yeah. But I think maybe it's not fully holistic as a science. Yeah. Um, but, then there's, the... but then there's biblical cosmology, yeah. which really just follows a certain version of Genesis. Yeah. Which is pretty clear to understand. You, it just says it in yeah. the Bible as such. And so that's yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, it's, I think it's still fascinating. And everybody here is so nice. Yeah. So we've been and... quite taken aback by how lovely. There's about 500 people here. Uh, a lot more females than we were expecting. Uh, overwhelmingly crowd of uh, conspiracy theorists but they're all surprisingly lovely yeah yeah and also and I, I, I'm too. not I thought they were going to be like it was just going to be like lunatics <laughs> <laughs> but no everybody's like I've had like really I mean half of them like, we've spoken to some people who basically have the same kind of general philosophical outlook <laughs> as I do um, as I said Elias is a flat is it, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, flat I just yeah. I don't know I think I don't know why did we do this? Well, I, for me, it's just the most fascinating thing that the most, it's one of the most accepted, understood thing. The globe, right? The, the globe. globe right? And it's kind of underlines the sort yeah. of, the, one of the most basic metaphysical claims yeah. of our world. And yeah. then it's just uprooted in like a few moments. And yeah. The, or just completely put into question. And <laughs> yeah. I, I sort of like the idea that nothing can be let go unquestioned or unlike. Um, yeah. So for me, I was really fascinated by like this, like how do we believe the things that we believe? Yeah. And like yeah, this yeah, is sure. so outside of our normal belief. Like how mm. do people get to this stage? And also something, if you no longer believe the Earth is is a globe, surely that shatters everything. How do you like? How do you like, go to Tesco's in the morning? But it's still the same thing. Like you're not going to fall off the planet by going to Tesco's. Yeah, but I think it. If you think the Earth is flat, you're really saying that a lot of people are hiding the truth from you. So how do you trust someone? How do you have any, like, trusting... Yeah, thing? I think that's... But that's the same thing with most conspiracy theories. How do you still have a job? Yeah, yeah. 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 But the bro... Yeah, okay, so, the, so when you say when you go to Tesco's, the broccoli that you thought was organic is no longer organic. Yeah. Like, how do you trust that? So it does change, yeah, yeah. It does change everything. Yeah. Well... I mean, obviously, anyway. the interview answers none of these. Yeah, yeah none of these, like, really profound, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> questions <laughs> that, that you guys are... Uh, like aching to uh, no yeah but uh, but on a practical yeah on a so practical note <laughs> because um, we're 
Yeah. Our chaos is quite uh, sort of magnetic. <laughs> and um, Mark <laughs> folds into this. But we often refer to this and that and we're pointing something and it's not clear what we're talking about. <laughs> Normally when we say this, we're holding a model of what Mark considers to be the flat earth. Yeah. Um, which is, it's basically a disc-like shape, um, kind of just like your standard world map. Yes. But it's kind of, you know, it's kind of condensed into this round shape and all around the edge is Antarctica, which is this ice block that protects the edge of the uh, earth. And then there's a like a sort of, it's like a snow globe. It's like a dome, glass dome going over the top. And inside is like a, a sun and a moon, which are apparently light bulbs. <laughs> they really, but we don't know who powers them. Uh, anyway, and then when we say that, or the other thing that we might be referring to is just like a squishy uh, globe. globe. Um, but we'll post both of these on our Instagram so you have an idea of what the flat earth model is. Perfect. Um, yeah, it's a surprisingly yeah. logical explanation for something yeah, yeah, yeah. so illogical. I'm something. impressed. I'm impressed. And I think it's important to we know. Are, we're, we're, we're journalists now. We're like <laughs> proper. <laughs> Full surprise. Full of surprise. Good. But I think, and it's important to know that we, we do give Mark space to talk through his theories with us. Maybe a little too much. Maybe a little too much space. <laughs> uh, but if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask us, yeah. feel free to send us an email. And if you have the patience to listen to the end, there's like... Um, he has some really interesting ideas on novelty and... And the uh, meaning of life. The meaning of life, which actually, uh, to some degree, even more interesting than, like... Nothing's more interesting. Nothing's more interesting than flat. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, thanks for enjoy. listening, guys. Listen. Uh, welcome to Karl Marx Does the Washing Up, where we ponder ludicrous metaphysical nonsense mm. in the time it takes to make five Tesco basic microwave meals. Yeah, which is usually 21 minutes. Yeah, I'm Shai Telly. And I'm Elias Kassam. And this evening Today. we've got with us bananas the, guest. Yeah, the bananas guest, the flat earth <laughs> advocate, Mr. Mark Sargent. Hi, guys. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for having me. No, it's thank a, it's you a pleasure. For, and we yeah. are at the. Uh, the UK Flatters Conference, yeah. Conference in Kidderminster. Yeah, Kidderminster. It's our first time here as well in Kidderminster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. I'm learning so much about the English landscape. Yeah, exactly. I've done a <laughs> lot of traveling around here. I, first time in UK, yeah. and I'm hitting all the hot spots. And driving up here from the Birmingham Airport, I was like driving around, going, "Where?" Yeah. I asked my driver. I go, "I go, where are we?" And, and he goes, "I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, I've right. never <laughs> been here." I go, "Wow, pretty brick houses." He goes, "Yeah, they are nice." So, <laughs> what's the hottest spot? Have you had a, a hotter spot? Yeah, have you got any recommendations for us that we should go and see in the UK? No, oh, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah du yeah. Dublin, uh, trade, oh, yeah, okay. trade Market Square. Oh, go, it's pretty hilly, go. though. For, like, no, 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 no. There's just this one street that they take all the tourists to, and it's just lined with your iconic pubs. And you have just these wall groups of like 20 tourists, and you know, because we were um, doing street activism there a few days ago. And then every once in a while, you know, a drunk, you know, your standard, they actually dress pretty nicely. I mean, I'm not sure if they were homeless or not, come up to you and start singing. Um, one guy kept, I mean, literally the entire time we're there, every chance he got, he would come up and start singing Amazing Grace, <laughs> which was amazing. But, but it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, he kept forgetting the lines. I kept, he kept leaving out, uh, save the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. That he kept forgetting that line. He kept going straight to, you know, anyway, it doesn't matter. So um, the, the point was is that when, when we were there, and I didn't realize how much the documentary had spread, you know, the Netflix yeah. documentary. Yeah, behind the camera. I had no freaking idea until I got to Dublin because we were only there a couple hours and had at least 10, a dozen people from different countries coming up to us. Uh, South Africa and Australia, Bolivia, French girls, you know, French high school girls came up to me, thought I was French. I'm going, why? And apparently the movie was dubbed in, fr in French. Oh, no way. Yeah, no yeah, way. yeah. And Americans. And, you know, it's like, wow. And it was like, you take... Because I've always said, I was like, oh, look, there are millions and millions and millions of people. We'll get into, like, the UW group. Wait, so a lot of the people who approached you, they really, like, believe in what you're... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, not... I mean, and the ones that didn't were absolutely curious, which is some people said, well, you know, what did you think about the documentary, for example? And I said, it was a Trojan horse. I got a chance to see it in the film festival theaters with people. So I would sit next to them with a hat and glasses. And so they didn't recognize me. Because eventually, if I tried that without doing that, they'd be like, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing yeah. here? Um, but what happened was, like, the first 20 minutes of the movie, they didn't think it was real. They thought it was a parody. 
for something. They honestly thought it was like a. In, in fact, I'll tell you, there was a Hollywood editor that got shown the movie completely cold. Didn't it's like okay, we're not going to give you any context. Just watch this. At the end, he he was talking to the directors uh, of this film, and he goes, he goes, um, he goes, where the hell did you get the budget for this movie? He goes, what are you talking about? He goes, all those actors. They played it so straight, like they believed, like it was a real thing. And he had to stop. And he goes, "No, man, it absolutely was a real thing." And he goes, "He goes, you mean that conference actually happened? You know, the conference in Rome?" Yeah, he goes, yeah. yeah and that, it blew his mind. He was like, "And that's what happened." I saw in the in when I was watching in the theater with people. The first twenty minutes, they're like, they're, you know, laughing. It's like, oh, it's kind of funny. And then all of a sudden, you, you see this, you know, thing over their face. They're going, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, this." This is actually a thing. This is like, you know, a thing. Like a corner, of, a giant corner of the internet that you didn't even know existed. And it's only been there for four years. But then, it's only would, been four years. Yeah. Would you say the same thing happened to you? Like, there, was there a point when you were laughing at the theories and then something went over your head? No, no, I wasn't you... laughing because it wasn't presented the same way to me. Um, when I got into it, uh, when I looked into it in, in the middle of 2014, there wasn't that much content out there. So when I got into it, it was... I was angry, you know, I was like, well, it was like, okay, I get it, but it's completely stupid, and there's no way it's real, so I'm just going to shoot it down, I'll spend three days and just hammer this thing into the ground, and then nine months later, I'm going, okay, I can't prove this anymore, so what do I do, so I made a series of videos, called The Flat Earth Clues, put it on the internet, said, okay, hive mind, you're smarter than I am, you know, as, as a whole, you know, people miss nothing, you know, look up, like, moviemistakes.com, if you make a mistake in media, people will find it, and so I said, I made a mistake, what is it? And the opposite happened. People, and the, the documentary didn't even talk about it, which was like the subject matter experts that called me up. Um, all branches of the military and surveyors and engineers and pilots and air traffic controllers and all these people going, it's not that crazy. It's not that oh, crazy. Really? Yeah. To where they were, and to where everybody, you know, I said, all right, all right, that's fine. And then, then of course, it snowballed because then people started making their own YouTube channels. They're going, not only this, but all this, and then you know, then it spread over to the UK and Australia, the English-speaking countries first, and then it got into the Pacific Rim and the Eastern Bloc, and I mean it's everywhere now. Worldwide. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's absolutely everywhere, and that's where, and, and then it just wouldn't slow down, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep going with this until it stops. You know, okay, shit. but you know what I, uh, it's like when you say you couldn't prove the globe anymore. Right. Then like. Then how do you just go to the flat? Like, well, that's me, just that's just it. Okay, here's so yeah, here's because I think that. we're both very into like the universe might be other than what we consider it to be. Yeah. But then you, if you took this into the room, right, this little dome model into the room over there, uh, and this was by the way, this is completely unsolicited too. This was an Italian coin company that just died. It's like, hey, would you like to endorse our coin? It's like, okay, sure, send me a prototype. So they just made a, a flat Earth model. It's basically a smaller version. Of We're basically looking at like a snow globe. Yeah, of yeah, that's basically a flat Earth. Yeah, and it's yeah, got if, a dome over it. Yeah, yeah, and if you took the snow globe off, you'd have something like that. Wow. Okay, cool. And so, this is where you have like Antarctica. Yeah, Antarctica and it would be really thick actually. This white part would actually be much, much thicker. Okay. So maybe double or triple that. So we're looking at a model of a flat Earth. Yeah. Roughly. What, Roughly. But it's, yeah. but, it's, but it's only the template of where we start. Meaning, okay, so here's the argument. I say, okay, can I prove the globe to you, or, or can I prove the flat Earth to you in a court of law right now? No, I can't. I can't absolutely prove it 100%. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in this that you, the only place you have left to go back to is something like this. Now, of course, again, the, the, the general consensus out there is like, okay, they argue about little finer points, about continents and perspectives and the sun and the moon and the stars and all this stuff. But everyone, which is why I use the Scottish Highlands reference, at the end of the day, everybody hates the English. <laughs> at the end of the day, everybody hates the globe. And that's where they go. I mean, and so, in, in, which is why we have like a 99% retention rate. Meaning, once you're into once you're into this, once you're into this, you can't go back. And then, and, which is why we use the Matrix as a reference so many times. It's the red pill, blue pill. Yeah. Even if you wanted to go back, you know, even if you could go back, would you want to? And most people can't. It's like, ugh. Well, so at what point did you start believing? Was it when you got that validation from the no. controllers, or was it? It was long before. No, that? no, no. It was when I, because I I thought I pretty much had it when I wrote the clues, but I wasn't positive. It was like doing a um, I don't know if you you guys don't do blue book tests here. Um, like turning in an exam, you're pretty sure you aced, but you weren't positive. You're like, oh, I couldn't have aced it. It couldn't have been that easy. And then when everyone started calling me up, yeah, for the first six months, I was getting reinforced because yeah, yeah. I, because yeah, I was like, okay. So I'm not, I mean, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop initially. It's like, okay, someone's going to blow this thing out of the water. And then once they didn't, 
And then the subject matter experts started calling and reinforcing each other. And it's like, I mean, these guys were hardcore people, um, especially with the ones that were into ballistics, you know, and, and you know, shooting stuff way over the curve. And they said, no, it doesn't, doesn't take it into account. And the aircraft don't take it into account. And nothing takes it into account. And we're going, it's okay. And, you know, I, and I recorded all these things on a little radio show, and everything came unsolicited. It was like everything for a reason. I'm a big believer in synchronicity, a big believer in destiny. And everything kept happening unsolicited. Um, the radio show people called me. It was out of the blue. It's like, how would you do a podcast? And right after I started the podcast, the subject matter experts started calling me. Um, the book publisher out of London you know, called me and said, hey, how would you like to turn this into a book? I said, sure, why not? You know, what yeah. do I need to do? Nothing. Just send us um, the transcripts of, of your clues, and we'll, we'll do the rest from there. Uh, I had no well, idea. Well, wait, so what, are the, what are these clues? What are the clues? Uh, what are the clues? Yeah, you yeah. haven't even heard the clues yet? Well, we have, but we want it for the audience. Okay, wanna, like, so the Flyer's least... Clues is a series of videos. The original was, I think, 11, and I think there's like 14 now, um, which w had no math, no physics, no engineering, and just kind of connected the dots. And I said, look, there's some really suspicious things that have happened since around 1960, uh, which basically hinted that, that the United States and the Soviet Union, and maybe a few other governments back then, figured out that we were actually in some sort of snow globe rather than a spherical, just in space model. And that they decided back then to cover it up the best they could with the only tools they had, which is time and money. The Americans led the charge on that with NASA. They basically um, militarized space and made sure that nobody could go out there. And then the Antarctic Treaty was put in place in 1959, right after NASA was created, and said that nobody can set up shop in Antarctica ever. It's the only treaty that's never been broken, unbroken. And then the Van Allen radiation belts were also announced the same year, in 1959, which said that, yeah, nobody can ever go up there because they're super, super deadly. But then we contradicted ourselves and said, oh, yeah, the Americans can go to the moon, which is like, okay, how can you go to the moon? The Van Allen radiation belts are, are really deadly, but that's one of my five points. I, sh I should probably get to it really quick. Okay. Here's my five points. First one would be, and, and most people agree, it's the, usually the, the one that carries the most weight, is long-distance photography, which is anyone that knows photography knows you can only see so far. But, but that has changed over the last 10 years. Because of HD technology, now you can see much, much further. So, like 10 years ago, a boat goes over the horizon. We all know this, right? If you take out NASA and all the space agencies, you've got to get rid of them because they didn't invent the globe. What do you have left for your arguments on the ground? You have um, boats going over the horizon and sticks and shadows, which most people don't know anyway. But we may or may not get rid of that. So, boat goes over the horizon. Gone. It's over the curve, right? The curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, which means 8 inches per mile per mile. When, and if you forgot everything about algebra in school, it means <laughs> that at 3 miles, it's 3 times 3, um, which is 9, times 8 inches, which is 72. 10 miles is 10 times 10, which is 100, times 8 is 800 inches. And at 50 miles, it's like 1,700 feet, roughly. Which means that whatever's out there at 50 miles, if it's less than, we'll just say 1,600 feet, it's gone. It's gone forever, right? It's on the other side of the hill. That used to be the case, not anymore. Now HD cameras, remember, 10 years ago, you had like a $3,000 camera. You zoom it in, it's like it's a blurry nothing. You have no idea. Now it's really crisp. You can see buildings, lighthouses, boats, you name it. The only, the only, Wait, you still see them? Oh, yeah. They come back into frame. They're back. What? Oh, yeah, you can do this all day long. We've got videos all day long. It's, I mean, that yeah. is the so thing. So you're saying they never go over that They curve. never actually go over the They thing. never you go say, over the They get smaller, though. They just get and, smaller. And then but the thing is, now we can pull them well, back in the frame, they so they're not disappear. smaller. Beforehand, they would shrink to a single pixel, yeah. and people say, well, they just went over the curve. But now, that single pixel, well, we can okay. blow it up, and there's the boat again. Okay. But I mean, like, the, if, it's, if it's flat, then yes. it will just disappear and get smaller. But if it's curved, the bottom will go before the top, Eventually, right? well, like yes. But however, there's some atmospheric stuff that goes into play here, which I think is part of the design of this, which is like atmospheric cleansing. You got to remember, what we're breathing right here isn't exactly nothingness. It's four parts nitrogen to one part, part oxygen. Yeah, yeah, there's some trace gases, but who cares? You know, nitrogen, oxygen, that's all you need. But that's really kind of like a soup. And that gets thicker with time, and it also magnifies with time. So everyone knows, like, uh, you see um, uh, divers at 200 feet down, you know, sun blinding over an eight, you know, but the sun cannot penetrate down there. It's, it's really, really dark at 200 feet. At 1,000 feet, it's pitch black. The atmosphere is really no different. So when you go off in the distance, which is why you can't see forever. People say, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Well, if you got rid of the atmosphere, well, so you probably could if you had a strong enough camera. That's the first argument, which is long-distance photography. Okay. Second is gravity versus the vacuum of space. 
which the argument, the short version is, why is our atmosphere here? Why, if this thing was covered with wispy smoke and this was a vacuum chamber around it, why is that smoke still here? You can't tell me this little ball is going to hold that on. I mean, considering the vacuum chamber, you know, pressure needs a container and pressure will equalize. And you're saying, well, you might have an ex explanation for that. Okay, let me explain it this way. Let's say the second floor of this building is in the vacuum chamber right now, and there's a cork in the ceiling. I pop that cork. What do you think is going to happen? A million times out of a million times, the air is going to equalize. It's going to be instant. It's going to be violent. And you might even black out and die. And, and you're saying, what's your point? My point is, why didn't gravity keep the air down here? I'm saying, uh, well, because, and then I say, just expand that, which is, all right, you know, the atmosphere versus a much, much bigger vacuum chamber. Why is the atmosphere still, you know, why is it still here? And I say, because it's in here. It's a pressurized system. This makes so much more sense. Third one. Um, what we, sorry, can I ask this? Yeah. This dome. Yes. What's, What's it, it, made, is it made out of? Earth yeah. is flat, and then there's a dome. Exactly. I mean, meaning, I mean, we're talking literal version of this. Like a yeah, literal yeah. dome yeah. encapsulated. Yeah, and this isn't just to hold the, the freaking map. This would actually be, you know, the what? biblical term would be the firmament. But uh, let me, I feel let me, like it's so precise for something. So once you disprove this, yes. then we've got a really precise model of... Getting close. Flat, yeah. I mean, uh, precise enough that conferences like these are happening. I mean, no, no. People going... The reason, again, why it resonates is... The more we stare at this, the easier it is to explain very, very hard things. Um, here, we'll, let me segue. I'll, the, the third, fourth, and fifth things we'll get to in a second. <laughs> Which is, no, no, no. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll this is the kind of chaos we like okay. normally yeah. deal yeah. with. Yeah. You'll, you'll understand this. Which is, okay, these two seem about the same size. They both make both approximate sense, right? One's the globe icon, one's the flat icon. The problem is, is that this does not exist on its own. This needs a massive, massive support system. That yeah, like the solar system. Oh yeah, you need a sun. I mean, think of it. If this was actual size, the solar system alone would be two thousand feet in every direction, right? Plus, you need a galaxy around that, a universe around that. Plus, you need trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics and so on and so on and so on. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of it's stuff lot that, of modeling, that yeah. the average person can't even begin to understand. Most people don't even understand algebra. This, that's it. That's so that, all. That's you a have. whole unit. There's that's, no universe. Yeah, that's the entire universe. Why okay. do you need? Why do you need a universe? We don't go to the universe anyway. It's it's. If, it's it's kind of like um, the argument we, we give for other people, which is if the if 99.9% .9 of the people believe the illusion, that's what you go with. That's all you need. If yeah. all you have to do is convince people that there's a universe out there and their imaginations, human beings seem designed for illusion, honest to God, that we seem to be, have, we have real perception issues, real vision yeah, issues, yeah. especially. So, you know, <laughs> why wouldn't this be a planetarium? Why not? I mean, the stars are out there, but you can just make up the stars. The stars are just some giant clock system. And so the more, again, more people stare at this, the easier it becomes to where it's like, yeah. again, the average person on the street, I'm not trying to pick on, on people that are out there. I used to, people say dumb down, and I, I'm not saying that they're dumb, but they're lazy. And so the average person doesn't know anything about engineering or math or, um, uh, what was anything? Engineering, math, and physics. <laughs> physics, they don't know anything. I mean, honest to God, the average person, literally, if you, I, I've tried. I've, I said, like, you know, eight inches per mile squared. I can say this so many times, they still don't get it. You know, and, and so if they don't know that, how the hell are they going to get this? I mean, not to mention the other things like... Yeah, that shit's complicated. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. extremely... I mean, what are we talking about? Quantum string theory and dark <laughs> matter and all this other stuff. Oh, yeah, it's fun to think about. Really, really hard to explain. Okay, so... Wait, wait, wait. Where's the sun in this model? In barely, the flat, you can even barely see it in that. And in fact, most of our models... Um, but there is a... No, but I mean, as in, like... Where is its inside? If there's no universe, then where, where is the sun? The sun and the moon, where is it in a planetarium? It's just up on the ceiling. So that's how do we get like seasons so wait, so it's and just sunsets? Yeah, that's right. You're asking all the is right this questions. The okay. Is this the turning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the sun, the sun and the moon are just ro revolving around the, the the inside like a mobile child. Oh, so the Earth isn't turning. It's just the, no, no. It's, it's just, just the, the stars. The, Everything no gim no different than a planetarium. The sky is moving. So when you see a time lapse of the star trails, if you see time lapse of the star trails, um, the uh, it's you know it looks like the stars are moving. That's what we're saying. We're saying the stars are moving, not not the okay. sun. But what's making them move? Do we? We don't know. What's making what? the Earth move? No, the, the stars. sun and the moon. Uh, oh, oh who, who the hell knows what second. that things are power? Where they're powered by? Only that the um, the moon, the sun is an incandescent light bulb, and the uh, the moon is an LED bulb, which I'll get to. Ah, in so a they're second. just bulbs. Yeah, they're just bulbs. They made. We, the, in fact, there was a. I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, he was a wonderful. He um, uh, physicist, kind of like a Tesla guy, and he did interviews out of his car. And he had this wonderful, wonderful rant. Oh, I'll, I'll ask somebody. I'll get it for you before. Yeah, I'm over, so, where he was saying that, that there is no fusion on the sun. He goes, I don't know what's powering the sun. 
He goes, but there is no fusion happening. It's getting its energy from something else. It's like basically like it's a light bulb. But we'll get to it. Okay, so real quick. So the third one. Wait, is, so, what? sorry. Is it enough? <laughs> uh, so is is it not enough just to disprove this, and then you then need to prove this? Like, do a lot of people just exist in the space where they're happy to say the globe isn't round? Yes. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. They and don't this, need to find out what it actually is. Exactly. The, well, this becomes kind of fuzzy. It's kind of out of focus for them. But they know it's kind of looking. It focuses the, the shadow. I'm going, okay, fine. Then the same, the exact same thing should apply for the other side, which is when the Earth becomes in front of the sun, then you should see, remember, the Earth is 8,000 miles wide. The blackout zone should at least be four times as wide, 250 miles wide. We should see a big black dot that shows up on the moon. We never do. We see a blood moon, which is a big giant red curve that goes over it, and we see the, the waxing and waning crescents, you know, and all the other stuff. We never see the blackout. We, the, year, the moon should turn into a giant eyeball, and it never, ever does. Fine. Not convinced of that one. Let's do the <laughs> let's, do, let's do the fourth one. The fourth one freaked me out, and I was in the flat Earth for a year before I even heard it. Again, people yeah. are just coming up with their own shit. And they're going, "Dude, there's something." It's serious. Like it's like finding a new drug, which is why in the book, the my new book, um, uh, this is the original book, but this one is uh, called Flat Earth um, Clues: End of the World. Uh, I, I call I, I literally say Flat Earth is a drug. And that is, once you get into it, like any new drug, people experiment with it's like, oh, no, man, you got to smoke it. No, man, you got to roll it up and put it in a burrito and eat it or bake it in a cookie. (laughs) No, man, it's a vape drug. And and it's like, no, you got to turn into eye drops, whatever. People just start making up shit. And so some guy uh, called me on a radio show and he goes, goes, man, the moon is cold. I'm going, all right, what about it? We all all know it's colder at night. What are you you trying to say? I was no, man, it's cold. And I go, I go, okay, explain. And he said, uh, so we're, I, I won't convert to Celsius for you guys. You guys know what Fahrenheit is. So uh, it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade because something blocks part of the sun, right? In the moonlight, it's the exact opposite. So it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, which is pretty cold, you know, Fahrenheit, but it's 60 degrees plus in the moon shade. In fact, up to 13 degrees swing. It's actually warmer outside of the moonlight. And you can, you can buy a point-and-click infrared thermometer all day long, and you can test this yourself, you know, when the moon is high in the sky. It doesn't make any damn sense. So now, does that... Pr- and we, we've tested this, oh, my God, we've tested this with um, just about everything included, including copper strips and glasses of water, three different glasses of water. Why three? Because I suggested them. So I was going, okay, what happens if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight? Does it even get colder? It does. Oh, shit. It what? Even, even gets freaking colder. And, and again, the, some of these people in this room have tested it themselves. It's absolutely freaking bizarre. Now, does that prove a flat Earth? No, it does not. Does it absolutely blow away the relationship between the sun and the moon? Yes, it does. I mean, to where so scientists and just freak out when they hear that one. The last question that I throw up. Remember, I only have five. That I, that I guess I, the moon has, but it has an imagery of coldness. Like, when, when you think of the moon, you think of a cold. Yes, anyway. and it's also way and too bright, never been by the way. It's that's extremely that's... bright. People in the full moon, they don't understand, like, why is it so white? You can't look at it with night vision, for example. The night vision will just start crackling. It's, it's so bright. You're saying, well, what do you mean? Well, when you look at the Americans' footage when they were there on Apollo, it was this dull, gray, really dark, you know, dark tones. You look at the moon, and it's like, it's blinding. I mean, they should have been completely overexposed. The, the, the moon, people on the moon should be walking around, and it would be almost like a fluffy cloud. But that's from a distance, right? When you see... Is it? Is it? Is that why it's doing it? I don't well, you're know. You're seeing the whole moon, right? When you look from here, you're seeing the whole moon. Yeah, but when, but when, you when you're see... on the moon, then you're just looking at the terrain. Maybe. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. That's Maybe, not what yeah, I want to say. Okay. It's, it's just, I, I we, again, we, people just come up with all this different stuff, and I was like, okay, great. The last one, <laughs> which, is, which is my favorite, is the, um, the Van Allen radiation trap question. Cannot be beaten, it's never been beaten. Which is, the Van Allen radiation belts announced by NASA, of all things, uh, 1959. Uh, NASA was founded in 1958. Uh, said, they're super dangerous, nobody ever go through them, kill you dead. You know, they're 60,000 miles thick. It's like this big donut around the Earth. Okay, are they deadly, yes or no? And if you say yes, then I say, okay, how do the Americans make multiple round trips through this thing without using gold or lead or a whole bunch of water as shielding? They use aluminum. Aluminum doesn't do dick against radiation. How'd they do it? Nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. There's still five of them walking around today. How'd they do it? And then you come back and say, well, okay, it's not very dangerous. I go, really? Because then I can point you at the NASA.gov website where they're talking about the Orion Project, which is the Mars system, and the capsules. They won't even send up people to test the capsules because they haven't solved the Van Allen radiation 
problem. And they made that video in 2014, and they were very, very clear about it. So which is it? Are they really deadly, or is it really not deadly? Well, according to NASA, it's really deadly, but they can't explain how they got everyone through. So those five questions, right? I, I wrote a lot to you, which were, which were um, uh, long-distance photography, gravity versus the vacuum of space, eclipse shadow, moon temperature, Van Allen radiation mills, right? Those are just five points that usually start people down the road. Um, half, half of our membership in the United States are hardcore Christians. Half of them. And well, yeah, what is the link between religion and, and the flat earth? But you can't see it? Well, I think I can see it. Sure you but can. It... Organic? Not organic. Not built. Built. So, if this was built... Yeah, was... but how do you know this is not built? Well, that's just it. The, well, that's just, just and, and religion will go down that road. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Uh, so hardcore the hardcore religion the people planet, will yeah. say that they're both built. The problem is, if you go down that road, it's like, yeah, but this really screams that it was built. This is like, oh, maybe it is or isn't, because science will say, like, um, science will say that it's an organic property, that, you know, part of the Big Bang. Science has absolutely no explanation for this. For the flat Earth. Yeah, for the flat Earth. And so they say, well, that's why they say it's not real. And so because of that, the religious communities and all five, you know, the big five religious houses, you know, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, they all have a stake in it. And all of them have, have sort of, you know, latched onto this because for the very simple reason of if it was built, well, then we have a weapon to go after science with. The religious, religious act, aspect of it is very, very strong. Um, and it's the double whammy. You want to know why it's resonating. It's not just because it's easy to understand. There's two parts to it, which is um, the, other, the other things that people resonate to is, one, if it's this, then we're all part of the same family. You know, we're all, this is it. This is all, you know, you still... Oh, there's nothing else out there, so we're all Not that we this. know. I mean, this, yeah. I mean, literally, you could put seven billion... Who's to say there aren't seven billion people sitting in that thing right now? As you think by, like, having this kind of epistemology would help us to sort of, like, bind together more yeah. and just come together because yes. we're all one. And, and I didn't intend that at all. Right. Um, and, again, I didn't invent Flat Earth, but that's what a lot of people go in. And the second part is, is that somebody's looking over you. Now I'm not going to put a name. Actually, there has to be for this there to exist. There has to be a creator. Oh, because uh, this, this can I, still I, like... you're absolutely right. And I say, did God build it or did He subcontract out the work? <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, whoever built this is one step closer to God's phone number than we are. So, yes, whoever's looking over our shoulder, and so at that point, it becomes much more intimate. God's just saying, why don't you just make it a globe? Fuck yeah. Well, no, no, no. No, and, and some people say, well, your God's all powerful. It's like, why? You're, you're saying that God's lazy. I'm going, no, God's not lazy. Yeah. I'm saying God is really, really efficient. So, why build? You know, Carl Sagan was a big believer, you know, believer in some of this, where he's like, man, the universe is just way too inefficient and empty, and there's just nothing, you know, it's just vast. It's way too big for what's happening. And I'm saying, yeah, you know, use that line from contact. You know, any advanced tech is going to be full, you know, um, their efficiency is going to function on multiple levels. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about multiple, multiple levels of efficiency. And that's where, again, people latch on to that. But don't and, you think, like, this, I think this is so contained that it's knowable, right? Yes. Whereas the universe at large, I mean, so it's why, why, unknown, so, right? so you, one of your so questions unknown. you guys will eventually get to is why pretend to be this? Why create yeah, this as the, the illusion, yeah. right? Because yeah. we didn't invent this. Yeah. Uh, I think that whoever, sure. whoever built this place put this in here, and I put this in the clues, to, um, to keep us from looking. We, basically, you look, we haven't, as a civilization, we haven't become really interesting in, in, in the last 500 years. And that's what it buys you. It buys you time, which is you don't want people, and I, I talked about this in the clues, I think it was status quo, where I said, I go, um, think about it like a wildlife preserve. Human beings are super, super curious about all sorts of shit, and we obsess about a lot of things. So let's say you put a, a buffalo and a big thousand, you, know, you guys have buffalo here, cow, cow and a big uh, uh, 5,000 acre wildlife reserve, right, with water and trees and grass. Super happy, that cow's not going to be happy, or cow's not going to care about anything. 5,000 acres, super big, right? You put a few human beings in there, what do you think human beings are going to do? They're going to walk up to the fence and that's all they're going to care about. They're going to obsess over the freaking fence. It's like, why yeah, is the fence here? The you, what's on the other side of the fence? Yeah. Why are we on this side? Who built the fence? Or did we anger yeah, the people sure. of the fence? Maybe we should sacrifice things to the fence. And then all of a sudden, you know, it goes from there. That's all they care about. What's the answer? You get rid of the fence. 
You make it invisible. You create the illusion that no matter where infinite, that you so can't, that go, you can't go anywhere. So it's infinite, right? So there's nothing on the other side. Yeah. You are on the right side. So you're just saying, as soon as we have like this Antarctic, this ice block that goes around yes. the edge of the Earth, yes. that, like everybody's going to the edge of the Earth. Everyone, oh yeah, churches would start on the ice. So and, then you like, so you're so just causing a complete fucking chaos. No, in this no, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. But so it's the, truth, like but in, yeah, 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 yeah. the way you see it. In your own analogy, are you obsessed with the wall? Like, no, 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 I'm not obsessed with the wall, but I am obsessed with certain aspects of it. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in design. And so when I was staring at this, well, part of the reason I, I built the clues, and I wasn't going to even release the clues until I was happy with looking at this and saying, okay, would I design it any differently? Now I'm, trying, I'm not trying to put myself in the mind of God, but it was like, okay, what little subtle things. And some of the design aspects of this thing are brilliant. <coughs> I mean, you, like, for example, little things like um, 3% salt solution in the ocean. Just enough that people can't drink what they're sailing on, but, but marine life is still fine and things still sink. Too much salt, things float, things never sink, and marine life doesn't make it. You say, what's the point? What the point is 3% salt solution limits exploration by like 95% because most of uh, your seabound stuff was all tied to how much fresh water you have on board. And if you had ultimate you know, infinite fresh water, you just keep freaking sailing until you starve to death or fish or just never stop. And, and things would have sped up really, really quickly. So potentially, okay, let's do this. Back up just a second. And that is, let's say, for example, <laughs> no, I'll throw the question to you guys. Let's say you were the king of France in 1500 and you had a map that looked like this. Could you do anything about it? No. You had wooden ships and you had horses. There's nothing you can do, right? So, As in, like, you can't travel anywhere? No, no, I mean, you can't really travel. I mean, it's fine. You're going to yeah. take wooden ships and horses to the ice? <laughs> Good <Yeah>. luck. <laughs> You're not gonna, and plus, you have to bring all your food with you. Nothing really changes until the internal combustion engine. Remember, that's 1900 and change, and then, you know, our decent planes didn't really even kick off until around 1940, 1950, and the 1960 more pressurized aircraft, which is what we're talking about here. So, 1928... Uh, Admiral Byrd flies around the North Pole, and whatever they figured out freaked him out so badly that the United States Navy had him and teams basically going around here in circles for 30 years looking for him. And then they figure out, figured out in about 1960. They figure it out, it's like, okay, here's the outer marker. And really up in 1954, they, they were been traveling like 20-something years, and they almost gave up. 1954, they came on television, Admiral Byrd's going, oh, yeah, the whole place is made out of money, tons of resources, just carve it up and live our lives. And, of course, Murphy's Law, the very next mission, Operation Deep Freeze, they find it. It, it, which is still classified to this day, but I know what it was. It was like the outer marker, and then they seal it and lock it down for all time. So, you figure out that you confirm, you confirm this in 1960. Do you tell the general population? Well, if you're a truther or your know, average person, knee jerk response would be, yeah, we should tell people. It'd be really cool, man. It's like, why? Think about the powers that be. The powers that be think about stuff pretty carefully. And it's like, okay, what's the worst that can happen? All right, well, um, educationally, astronomy and astrophysics, those go down overnight. The remaining physical sciences, geology, hydrology, archaeology, those have to be retooled from the ground up, literally. Um, that's every university in every country, simultaneously. The whole thing just, you know, as fast as the wire and television and radio, people just freak out. Economically... World markets have to be suspended for several months just to figure out what it means. Because the dynamics is like, okay, uh, do we still go to war? What happens to the defense industries? What about resource allocation? What the hell? You know, I mean, everything still like operates in exactly the same way, right? No. More or less. Well, saying, more no, or less. But, but here's, the, here's, here's, I mean, chaos. the laws of physics don't change. The laws of physics don't discover. change, but yep. people's attitudes change. Because yeah, yeah, then, yeah. again, remember, the fence is back. Now yeah, the fence yeah. is back, and of course hey, you the want big. To know what's on the other side. Yep, yep. And the big one. Oh my God! Exploration. People like you know people be allocating massive amounts of resources, and of course the government have to tell them, look, we already tried to bust through it with atomic weapons for four years from 1958 to 62, and that didn't do anything. So, so. But the last one, of course, is, is religious. But then, why, why are you advocating that? Like, why would it, why is, would I want to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is why it like, you, yeah, truth, well that, is super, truth your superior. No, 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 no. For me, it is it has nothing to do with me. It is just that whatever's happening is happening on its own. Meaning, I am just along for the ride here. Look, I mean, when I said <laughs> uh, when I said that it's unsolicited, I'm not even trying to do this, and it's happening. Meaning, I didn't I didn't write that freaking book. The publisher did. You know, I just gave her the audio files. I didn't have to trend really transcribe it myself. Um, I didn't do it. But anything. like when you first got into this, right? You like you made when, all these when I first got into it, yeah, when like, I first got into it, it was just like, a question that I threw out there. I was going, look, can it be real? And then as it started, as the, the ripples started affecting, you know, started going outwards, people are saying, Yeah, it's real and it means something. 
and then I had to reanalyze what it meant to me. Where did that initial question come from? Because it's like it's almost from a place of deep mistrust, but it's like mistrust of the government or mistrust of. It was a casual curiosity, and believe it or not. It was, it was conspiracy boredom. I had looked at, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you can think of. You know, some good or some bad. You know, did Bigfoot have Elvis's baby? Probably not. <laughs> did, you know, did... did <laughs> but that is true. I mean, I have an opinion on There's dumb ones. Well, again, I, how can I judge? You know, I wake up every day with a yeah. big bowl of flat earth. Uh, but I, so I can't. So people that, like, they'll throw conspiracies at me. I literally can't, can't judge. It would be hypocritical. But it was casual um, conspiracy where I looked. It was on my bucket list. It's in the documentary. You know, it was on my yeah, bucket list. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, okay, I'll look at it. I'm getting older. Why not? Let's take a look at it. And so I'm getting older. <laughs> let me, let me question let everything. Me disrupt my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me disrupt my entire life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like, okay, it's the last one. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Let's just take a look. The final frontier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I was looking, I was going... Uh, and then again, it was casual. It's like, okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't, um, I can't figure out. Show me where it all, where I went wrong. And honest, honest to God, as God is my witness, I thought that somebody, some academic, is like, all right, here's where you went wrong. You forgot to carry the two, and you can shut down your YouTube channel and go back to your life. And it's like, great. Where's the wine and popcorn? You know, I'd, I'd be right on it. And instead. Everything, again, it started happening on its own, where people just started calling me out of the freaking woodwork. The media, just general people, people in that audience, you know, it's like, hey, I want to talk about flat earth. And then, of course, the subject matter experts, all these, all these people, it's like, yeah, you know what? This may, it also, in addition to what you talked about, it also may be true because of this, because of this. And it just kept going worse and worse. And then they start, then they started tearing down NASA. And then they started tearing down physics. And then they started ta- tearing, well, they didn't really have to go mo- much in the way of mathematics, but some engineering things. And it just got weirder and weirder to where then all of a sudden, um, the first celebrities, I talked about this in the speech, um, the first celebrities started coming out. You know, B.O.B. did yeah. his thing where Neil deGrasse Tyson came out against him. It's like, why would Neil even respond? It's like, it was like it was meant to be, where it's like, if, if B.O.B. had just done his thing and Neil Tyson didn't respond, no one would care. But Neil Tyson decided to go on Comedy Central and do this, you know, this thing where he just rambled about shit that was way above people's heads with no graphics. And it generated a lot of, you know, the media was like, oh, my God, the world's most popular scientist versus a Grammy nominee. (laughs) Sold. And then that carried us through 2016. 2017, Kyrie Irving, you know, the basketball star, came out. And then um, Freddie Flintoff, that didn't help. You know, and so that (laughs) happened. And then 2018 was Mad Mike, you know, a guy, a stuntman, rocket guy, who came and said, hey, can can I have some money so I can finish my rockets? Yeah, put a flatter sticker on it. And he put a big flatter stock, and people lost their minds. It's like, oh, my God, it's the greatest (laughs) thing ever. It's the stupidest thing ever, but it's the greatest thing ever. And it just kept getting bigger. Nothing seemed to slow it down. I, call it, I also call it like the flat earth drug deal, which is, you can imagine like a, you know, a trench coat with all these drug, you know, conspiracy drugs in it, <laughs> and then you come up and it's like, oh yeah, it's like, it's, like, it's like, what do you got? It's like, oh, I got something, man. I don't know if you, you know what? I don't know if you can handle this, man. It's like, uh, it's flat earth, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like, don't take too much, don't take too much, and right? You didn't get it from me. Right? <laughs> it's like, you, you give them the disclaimer, it's like, you know, I'm warning you, man, don't, don't do it. Oh, yeah, sure. Still do it. Thank you. Ah, amazing. Do you want to Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, we'll share that. Amazing. Thanks so much, Thanks, man. man. Thank you so much. That's so Thank kind. You. Thank you. Um, Is there drugs in this? Oh, that's the level of water levels. Yeah, that's the yeah, other yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so, um, but, but it's true. It's, we, have, we have a lot of... So I'm trying to get more inflammatory with those little statements because, honestly, my goal is to either be on the cover of Time as um, the most dangerous man to science ever or just the villain. That's fine. Because um, I can be a disarming villain. Uh, or um, I want to be in front of a Senate subcommittee where, you know, because they brought, already brought in Google to address it. So, no, I want them to bring in us. I want them to bring in us and, and to where they say, okay, what the hell is happening? And once they address this, that's But then there's, so, yeah. but, 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 just, what is it about, <laughs> what is it about this that's just so, that seems to attract so many people? And it's so seems, absurd. It's so absurd, but is it the absurdity that makes it so believable? Like, how are so oh, many people you, willing to throw away because every, everything? Because to everybody, this? everybody that goes into it does the same thing. Here's why: it's so. Because so, you're not even promising any answers. It's not promising. Like, we're not even asking for money. Yeah, they're not, <laughs> but, they're, but, but, it's not but like but, a cult. But the crazy thing is that promoting if you think it just in concept, like forget all the science about everything. This is not actually absurd. What, this is absurd. Earth. The globe is more. Absurd the globe than is the flat. more absurd. I'm not saying I believe in the flat Earth, but the flat <laughs> Earth is <laughs> is less absurd. 
It is. By, it is by, by, by comparison. By Absolutely. Comparison. And, oh, yeah, my, yeah, my, wait, my point, which is if you, if you believe like, else, um, like the dome is in, quite in writing, in writing, like, for yeah. example, there's plot holes, right? Yeah, the dome's the Okay, same. and yeah. I, call, <laughs> I call it the, uh, the, the story boat, and that is, are there plot holes in both of these? Sure. There's way more plot holes in this. So if yeah. you're talking about movies and suspension of disbelief, you are way, once you get into this, it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, I get it, because it's easier, it makes sense. But the big reason why it resonates, I mean, all those things help. I mean, there's a lot of different ways why it pulls people in. Because with demographics, we pull on everybody from homeless people to corporate A-listers, and I've talked to them. I mean, some really heavy hitters that won't come out of the closet. Well, that's another thing. 90% of our membership is in the closet. So if gay members are 50% in the closet, we're 90. Because they're afraid of friends and family and coworkers, right? I mean, so yeah, I mean... I once told someone that maybe the Earth might not be round, and they they just stopped speaking to me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah, and why? Yeah, exactly. Right. But but here's the thing: the reason why no, we're going to lose a lot of friends. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot of friends. No, no, no. All followers. you have to do is is say that. Well, no, you will catch hell. Everybody does. Which is they'll you'll get the. Uh, trust me, I've, I've read all the quotes. Which is I can't yeah. believe you're giving this topic a, a platform. Yeah, it's yeah. like this is We've too crazy, even for you guys. And which yeah, is why sure. I said in my clues, I said, I know people that absolutely convinced the entire royal family are made up of lizards. <laughs> and I, will go, I have gone to him and I said, yeah, what about flatter? Then get the hell out of yeah, here. It's like, what? It's too far. The reason, the reason <laughs> though, why it resonates is because everybody goes into it hating it. Nobody loves it right away. Now, yes, women are more open-minded than men. I've seen women go in like less than an hour. Men take a lot longer. But everyone that goes into it tries to blow it away. Oh, so and you go into it. You go with into a it negative. It, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody. In fact, one of my quotes is: "Look, every day to this day, every day I try to destroy flat Earth, and every day I fail." And that everyone out there. Well, you, would, would you just give it up if the evidence came? Everyone would. We'd yeah. walk away from this conference uh, in yeah. two seconds if well, we you made had a lot some, of money from this. No. Well, the, the commercial wasn't bad. I will admit that. I, and I get paid. I make more money than most of the people because I've had more opportunities. Um, Google pays me a little bit. The book people play, pay me. The radio people pay me. And the is this the quest for truth rather than yeah. the quest for money? Oh, there is there's no, there's no quest for money in this. Nobody goes into Flat Earth to make money. I mean, I didn't even have, I didn't even monetize my channel for the first six months. Because it's like, we go into it because we're trying to solve a problem. That's how everyone goes in. It's like a riddle that you can't solve. So when you go in, you try to, it's like, okay, something, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, you, you, you don't want to accept it. And you just keep staring at it. The longer you stare at it, the worse it is. And then finally, there's one day, all of a sudden, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we've got some water. <laughs> the, um, the, um, one day, all of a sudden, it flips. It's kind of like looking at, you know those um, stupid drawings where it's a woman's face and it's also a rabbit? You know, depending on which yeah, way you look you at it, you diamonds. don't see the rabbit. You don't see it, you don't see it, you don't see it, and then all of a sudden, oh, there it is. Oh, but maybe, are you saying it could be flat and round? Well, it is, fl it is <laughs> half flat, flat. It half is round. flat and round. Huh? Okay, but, but you got to remember, technically, yeah, 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 technically yeah. round is also two-dimensional. We, we, and by the way, it's also yeah, the yeah, sign yeah. of a true flat earther. So, true yeah. flat earthers do never use the word round. They use They, the word, they use okay. sphere, globe, ball. God, they I'm never, and so when anyone tries to, no, 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 anyone that, so no, I mean, once you flip, I mean, like, anyone tries to infiltrate, we can spot him in two seconds. It's like, oh, I absolutely don't believe it's round. It's like, burn him, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we grab ropes. So I, I, do you lose a lot of people when you start talking about the dome and then, you know, the sun and the sun being a bulb and the moon being an LED? Is that when you lose a lot no, of people? No, well, no, people no. Really you, don't, you don't really, there's no one point that loses because everybody goes you in. You start lost. Yeah, yeah you <laughs> start lost. Yeah, no. is it and then you're like, what the fuck? No, no, no. You, you, you start out looking, it's like, that's the stupidest thing ever. And then slowly but surely, we eat at you with your questions. Because everyone starts off with, all right, what about blank and how does blank work? It's, it's like all... a finger up your ass. Like, you're like, no, no, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> oh I do want that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. I've never yeah, heard yeah. that. Yeah, but, but, it, but it's, it's true. Drug, that's, right? It always starts out in the negative, and by the time it's done, uh, you're, you're done asking the question. Everyone asks a series of questions, and do you go through the five stages of acceptance? Yeah, probably. There are some people out there, the, the dedicated hardcore troll channels that stuck in denial. The director of the film. Yeah, yeah, Still yeah. Well, to I, did, this day. I read his. Uh, yeah, I read an interview with him. He's not a big fan of you guys. No, no, no. no. He <laughs> hates flat Earth. Now yeah. he likes the people, but like he still believes that I absolutely. I'm a con man. That I'm not doing. It's like no, dude. When am I gonna reveal my grand plan? I've been doing this for four years. So when, when am I going to, you know, and, and others is like, oh, you're the greatest secret agent ever. It's like, really? Again, <laughs> four years. When am I going to take it off road? And plus, there's so many people that do great things. I mean, this is my first time doing stuff with the UK directly. And most of the time we do it through Skype and social media. 
but uh, no. I, just, but I, don't, I don't get quite what so because you're saying I don't really get the motivation because you're why saying why am I doing it? Yeah, because. Because you say it's just disrupting, letting the world know that this is the real. It's going to well, disrupt fucking well, everything. Well, potenti- potentially it'll disrupt things. But why am I doing it? Um, well, I, you know, I don't think... Okay, I'm a believe, believer of, of glass half, half empty, glass half full. So I don't think... Like, we've done hundreds of meetups. I don't know how many conferences at this point, And nobody... There's been no incidents. Nobody's... There's been no violence. There's been no... You know, nobody's... You know, done no vandalism. It's been really, really happy. I mean, hell. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. A, there's a playlist on my channel called Flat Earth Music, 2015 <laughs> to present, and it's got 270 <laughs> tracks of people making positive Flat Earth music in rock and folk and what, rap. What, what do you mean? What, what is Flat, what, can flat you Earth music? Flat, what is Flat Earth music? Like music that... They talk with Flat Earth lyrics talking about, oh, how NASA is a con man and, oh. and how you want to learn the truth and do all this stuff. Shit. And it is, oh yeah, there's amazing music out there. And, and saying, well, what's your point? My point is, find me any other conspiracy that you have happy songs. Find me a happy song about JFK. You know, oh, the president was shot in the head. Dun, 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 dun. No, you never hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this seems quite re- benign. Yeah, it's, it's really, like. that's, why, that's why you can't But then why would NASA it. cover it up? Like, if, it, if it's benign and it's why Na- Why is NASA just covering up themselves? Why not just tell people about Flat Earth? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, like you said why that. that you know, the stock because you, they, they, don't, they don't want to take the risk. Would you look? Yeah. If, if people in positions of power, even if there's a five percent chance that people are going to walk through the, the streets with torches and pitchforks, you're not going to do it. You're just not going to take that risk. But now, I almost think, I hate to say it, I almost think it's we're being allowed to to let this happen. We're doing their work. Well, like forward. a consciousness, or like yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're being allowed to push this thing forward because Google didn't stop. Look, if they wanted to shut us down, if they wanted to even stunt us, we're talking about easy programming. You know, in Google, you just make it so the search engines don't pop us up. You never recommend us on YouTube. Yeah. You can, in the soft, in the internet, you can really, really slow us down. Yeah, yeah. And they weren't. They were absolutely just f- feeding the flames for as long as they could. Do so you think maybe, like, in the past, the world wasn't ready to and know now they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in 1960, oh, I put, I'm a big believer of... I'm kind of, again, devil's advocate. Uh, I, I put myself in the other person's shoes. So I believe in conspiracies on the weight of if I would do it myself. I mean, does the end justify the means? You know, do you do this? You know, because, pe- look, people in positions of power have to make difficult decisions all the time. And sorry, you can't call a committee for someone that's like, eh, let's just do it. You know, better ask forgiveness than permission. And in this case, it's like, okay, 1960, do you tell people? No. Do you tell people now with high-speed internet, social media, and six billion smartphones? Yeah, you could do it. I still, don't, I still don't get why such an elaborate model, like the, this, this, the globe yeah. in its universe is fucking, it's like, it's wildly elaborate. Why invent this for... Why, in, why invent the illusion? Yeah. Like I, because it, it, it makes this more viable. Again, if you get rid of the fence, if you don't get rid of the fence, modern technology... Yeah, but there's a way of just saying infinity without like, like we, we've how? gone to... Exactly. Well, but, not infinity. Wait, 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 you can't, know, you can't like, do an infinite plane. Because that or gives just call it a solar system and like call it a day. Like we haven't been able to go to Mars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Just, oh like, no, yeah, but yeah. but, but like, okay, oh, once we get to Pluto, then we can say okay, here's, like invent some here's more stuff. here's the best. Here's <laughs> the best. No, no, you're absolutely right. Here's the best part of that, which is if I let's just say it was me that built this, right? Oh yeah, I may give you the idea of the solar system. You know, I may plant that in a few people's heads, like Copernicus or whoever, right? But the rest of it's up to you. You just made up the rest of it. You, with your imagination. I mean, think of all the science fiction. Oh, yeah, fine, we came up with the solar system. You know, the solar system was created by science, it was, but it was us and our imaginations. We were the ones that came up with Star Trek and Star Wars and Stargate and freaking every single space movie we've ever, we've ever done. We were the ones that took our imagination out there. You know, science just said there's nothing out there. We filled it in with, science with all the other door, bits. Right? Yeah. But this, yeah. is, this, is, this is also the same thing, right? Like, you, you, we came up with this. Like, it's... Yeah, it is, but but I th- I believe here. Okay, you want the, like the the end game for something like this, not not Avengers End Game, but anyway. yeah, yeah. But once but once your worldview has been shattered, are you open to anything? I just think, I just think this is this is this is alluring because it's so simple. Yeah, but but, right? then, but you but you crave something but simple. You once crave, it's been but shattered, that doesn't make right? it true. No, but once no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're because because it doesn't matter, it does, the truth at that point, I'm not going to say it isn't truth because I do believe, but the truth at that point, you are genetically built to go after the easier models. Meaning you, yeah. are, you are going to be driven to it. And it's like, well, maybe not you, but the average person on the street is. 
Absolutely. But, but that's because it's more computable. That doesn't make it more true. Doesn't, doesn't again, matter. you're going to get stuck in that loop if you keep doing that, which is, does it, again, it doesn't matter. Because, yes, you're absolutely, you keep saying it. It's like it's more computable. That person, that person, that person, they're going toward that because it's more computable. It makes more sense to them. Yeah, but a lot of people equate what they believe in with the truth, right? Like, not many people separate those two aspects. If I believe something, I'm going to think it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's that's the but that and that's what they're playing on, right? Like yeah, but like you, also your point earlier was that, that, like true, that right? we can't actually trust our vision so much because we are, it's we are, always we are, constantly lying we are, to us. Yeah. We are genetically predisposed but, to illusion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A perfect example: if you've ever been stuck in traffic and you zoned out, and the car next to you did it move, or did you take your foot off the brake? Or you have two yeah. trains that are next to each other. Yeah. I hear that a lot here. Yeah. And you have no idea if that train's moving or your train's moving. Yeah, you have yeah, no yeah. freaking idea. Yeah. So I'm totally on board with that, but I don't know why this would be any different or why this would be immune to that. Like, this is, this is part of the same de degree of delusion as any other. Or, well, okay. Right. Again, yeah. until the, the problem is technology. So that works fine. That model works just fine until you have the technology to, f to prove it out for yourself. Which is why, again, every freaking culture drew that model up until about 500 years ago. And then this was introduced. Because if the internal combustion engine, again, if it is, if it is made and that thing is still out there, what do you think they're going to do? First thing they're going to do, they're yeah. heading for the freaking ice. So it's, they're going so for the wall. This coincided with like the Industrial Revolution? And yes. Stuff like, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, at that, least, exactly but, but they did it way in advance. They, they got a really a head start on it because, and, you know, newspapers were already on their way and the Industrial Revolution along with radio and all that stuff, yeah, it came along really quick. But you wanted to get a head start. You're not going to wait. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, not going to yeah. interest the globe in 1800. So in this flat model, we still get seasons and sunsets and what we was Sure. Doing. But that's all controlled. Controlled. It's all, it's all a mechanism. It's all it's, a mechanism. It's all a machine. Or a virtual, if you want, to, you want to go down the virtual world, a virtual thing. And by the way, that it would be, if I had, to, if I had you know, ultimate free um, way of just throwing stuff out at people, I'm a huge believer in simulation theory. Absolutely believe. I mean, the, the double slit experiment and quantum entanglement. <laughs> Careful. Sorry, and sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, the big one is, um, have you guys heard of like neuroscience and free will? Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of. It's two things. Yeah, I've heard yeah. Of oh no, there's, there's, <laughs> there's an experiment. There's an experiment the, tied to it. Yeah, yeah it's the literally free will called exist. Yeah. In, free, in free will. But that is free will doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Which is because I because I, I, I like to tell people I was like, look, our definition of God and creation and everything is limited to our technology, which is like we used to think God you know did stuff with hammer and a chisel, and then I was like, well, I don't think we ever said that God used a power saw, but now I said God's a programmer. Which is, but the average person on the street does not get it. They will not get it. it look, the Matrix is twenty years old. Nobody's understanding that movie. You know, they, they, yes, they, they kind of get it, but unless you're in it, it, you know, you don't understand from the inside. So, um, neuroscience and free will give you that. And, and if it is virtual, right? Wait, so what's your, your, uh, your correlation between the free will and the... Oh, yeah, we're getting to that. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so if, it's, if it's enclosed, right, if it's a flat enclosed world, it's probably digital. Right? And that is meaning, on the outside of this, it's probably a big box, you know, because all programming is done on a giant box. You know, computers can't think in circles. They can only think in squares. But, oh, it's, it's, sorry, I know I'm getting... Fun. But why is this not a square? Like, why, oh, no, because, not... because I can't go to the... I mean, in some of the models, yes, we do have it square. This is just an easier thing to carry around. But on the outer edges, it's probably square. <laughs> if it's virtual, then it's squared off. Um, if it's virtual, right? Because, again, it's... computers like Fortnite and Warcraft and, and GTA and all, all that, they're all right? built on giant square boxes. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to figure out if there's a circle inside a box because every or is thing it, or it should is be a box. Or is it just yeah, yeah. a box inside a box? Or, like, or is it just an illusion of a circle? But, yeah, I know. Yeah. Does it actually matter what With the, the model looks like? Is it just more important well, to believe I think, that the Earth is not no, round? No, I think because I'm totally on board with the idea that, the that Earth is we not round. don't have a certainty about how the universe is or how right. the world is. Yeah. So, but what I don't get is like ascribing another certainty with such precision yeah. in order to take its place, especially one which just seems to like yeah, tick the, off all the boxes that kind of yeah. satisfy us. And everything fits. Because then the so motivation well. seems to be. Sure. Hi. Yeah. Do you mind if I listen for this? Yeah, yeah, no, so no, so no, that's it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, all right, so, so. Do you need this, or is it enough to say that the Earth is not round? 
Like, do you need? Uh, no, a, you need a you need of, something to go to, and which is, in fact is to, one right? of is one of the arguments I've thrown, and some of the people have tried this, which is it's like, w w do we need a model? And it's like yes, because the general public needs something. We're yeah. always a big believer, and you have to give them something. You can't give yeah. them nothing. You can't say, well, you can't have this and say, well, we don't know what this is over here. Yeah. You can't uh, do you that because once you do that whole, fun, it's like, oh, it's just smoke. It's like people, you lose them. You want to know how to lose okay. them? That's how you lose them very, very quickly. You need so, to offer this, that so this is basically an, a, a more accurate approximation. Yes. And this is just a... This is just a... This is, this <laughs> yeah, yeah. is, this is, the, this is the illusion. But I'll yeah. give you the, the neuroscience and free will thing, which... Uh, it's a fucking so, intricate illusion, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's so, supposed to be. But then, are you willing to accept that maybe this could also be wrong, and there could be, like, a third thing? Of course. Yeah, like, of course. and this is a consistently, Absolutely. like, you're always... No, it's, it is just the model. base is the base template which we work off of, and then, every people, we, then we argue from there. But at the end of the day, again, Scottish Highlands, we hate the English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're so, united in the hatred of the globe. But it, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, and I, anyway, sorry, I watched Braveheart too many times. So, uh, okay, so, neuro, so, so if it is digital, this is where it gets even really creepier. So if it is digital, if it is virtual, which, again, I, I will never really talk to people that much about because it's like, again, the average person, you have to start out somewhere. Again, yeah. my training is like, look, you have to start. If it is virtual, then it is flat. And if it's physical, then it is flat. Either way, it's flat. But wait, wait, wait! I, I didn't get that conclusion. If it's no, virtual, no, so that's if it's if, whether it's virtual, whether it's digital, it's it's flat because that's how it would be done. You know, all virtual worlds are built flat, completely flat. And if it's physical, no, that's, that's how we've built computer games and stuff. I'm sorry, art doesn't imitate life. Why would why would we why would whoever built this build if it's if if we built it? Yeah, you know, I know you're absolutely right, right? There's not there's we, nothing to say that like that. That, that we built that it? God builds in the same way that we built. Yeah, but if we no, no, but, 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 but God in when we built stuff, right? But, but there's I all, mean, that's why not? Yeah, well, okay, why not? Fine, well, okay, fine, why no, not? I'm, I'm not saying that's not yeah, true. Yeah, but no, there's no reason to draw that. Conclusion. Why? But why would? It, why would? For example, um, we, I would never ever say that it, that human beings are arrogant enough. Like we didn't invent code. God invented code. And, when, and so it's like, okay, who's the better programmer? Probably him. But we would use some of the same similarities. Let's not get into that right okay. now. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so. also, isn't it just the fact that it's virtual? Does it matter what shape it would be when it's... Like, just admitting that it might be virtual is, is quite a big step already. Yes. But, you mean and what the shape of, of a virtual world? Yeah. Does that matter what the shape would be? Or, or do you only ascribe to the idea that it would be flat if it was virtual? Well, again, it would be, it's more efficient if it's flat. Way more efficient because, again, if the, if the general population can't see the curve because of atmospheric things or whatever you tell them, remember, part of it's just conditioning, which is you tell them, yeah. very Orwellian, which you tell them there's a curve. And how I've had people, how many people have seen, like said, from the beach? They've said, look, they've said, I've seen the curve from an airplane, they've seen it from a balloon, they've seen it from a beach. Like, really? You've seen it from the beach? Because Neil deGrasse Tyson will say you can't even see it from 130,000 feet. So if he says, and remember, he's the face of science, if he says you absolutely cannot see the curve from yeah. way, way up there, who's seen it from the beach? Yeah. It's, not that, it's not that they see the curve from the beach. They want to see the curve from the beach. Four lights, five lights. The great line um, from Star Trek Next Gen, which I love so much about conditioning, yeah. where Picard's being tortured, and he goes, you know, this way after he's rescued, he goes, and the scariest thing was, at the very end, I saw freaking five lights. You know, he believed it. He actually saw them because he wanted to avoid, you know, the conditioning was so heavy. Anyway, so... But what I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know, what I'm getting is that actually it's really about how much life you consider there to be. Because if this is the only life there is, then this is the most efficient um, model. But if there's, there's life, life everywhere this, else, oh, then, yeah. then the, the globe model becomes no, more No, efficient. no, no, not at all. Okay. Not, not at all. For example, I've said not only um, are we not the first people to rent this apartment, but why would this even have to be a one-off? I mean, if, if it was me... Ah, so okay, so the yeah. multiverse thing still... Functions. Well, it could yeah. be you could be multiverse or multiple of these. I mean, why not? Why way. not have a, like a whole egg crate of these or a whole room full of these? Yeah. yeah. Well, are you going to build just one? Nah. You can build a whole slew of them, and then it's just a question of can people go from one to one to another, which I doubt. I think. And I think most. It implies that there's a creation. Wait, wait. Now we, are we talking about one. like oh. time travel? No, not necessarily time travel, but any other Space beings. Time. Like, are are we the first people to rent this apartment? No, no. I mean, the sunken city is off Japan. The sunken city is off of India. Bimini Road. Oh, no, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, and so on and so on, right? So uh, yeah, what yeah. happened to the older civilizations? I think there's rules, I think. But they're still contained within a certain space that's the, big, that's the big question. Are they trapped in here with us, or do they get to go out? Uh, I think they're trapped in, but that's just okay. 
So, but so, so there's a limit on the space, but then loads of things can happen in different tempo. Sure. Like sure. Oh, and if you want to go different. interdimensional, oh, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But again, I try to keep it simple. Okay, yeah, let's stick to one dimension. <laughs> if, so if, we, if we start with the simplest, yeah. Yeah, okay. So and then we're flat. Sorry, sorry, you were talking about the code. In yeah, the exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so if, you know, it wouldn't, of course, and the outer edges would be squared off if it was virtual. Uh, because en just engineering works easier with, I mean, look, seriously, try to tell a computer to draw a circle. What are you doing? You're just having tiny. It's like, well, I can draw a circle. It's like, no, if you zoom in, it's still pixels. That's all it is. It's, you know, steps and steps and steps. You know, computer can't, we can do this. Computer does, has, doesn't understand that. And we, have, we can't explain it to them either. But then if you look at nature, like they say that there's no real straight edges in nature. Everything's like. Mm, don't go down yeah. there. Again, it'll start to blur together. Anyway, let me throw out one more. <laughs> one, one, let me throw out one more at you, and then you can ask a few questions, and, and then yeah, eventually. Yeah, we'll what, well, I don't know. What time is it? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we just, how, where, how long are we going? Oh, we've gone on for a while, yeah. All right, okay, so, we'll try and wrap. We'll try okay, so let's, let's, do, let's do this. Um, so I'll throw out the, um, uh, the neurosciences versus free will, which I, when I stumbled across it, I thought it was fantastic. I mean, the double slit experiment is fan uh, fantastic anyway. You're wondering, well, does God program? Yeah, it's like, okay, that, well, yeah. since uh, behind me, I'm not looking at it, so it's not being rendered as detailed as it could, that is really weird because that's exactly what we do in software. You know, it's the whole 13th floor argument, which is, okay, why is the same thing? Because, you know, again, if your character doesn't go on the other side of the mountain, do you render the other side of the mountain? No. Why would you? There's nobody there. It's, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? No, there's no freaking tree because <laughs> we didn't <laughs> render it yet. Such a good <laughs> response to that question. <laughs> that such a good response to that. That's the, so good. <laughs> so, but where it gets spooky is neuroscience versus free will. So all scientists do all sorts of fun stuff, you know, hook up electrodes to people's brains, and they hook it up to computers and you have stuff. It's like, why not? That's what you do. It's like every scientist is like, oh, let's just hook up people's brains to shit. So they're hooking up people's <laughs> brains... And they start hitting buttons, Scientism. and they start registering brain waves. And uh, again, you know, then this is what our science, it's like science on science crime, because the other science gets really mad when, when this experiment's done. Science so they, they <laughs> click buttons. It's like, okay, you choose a number, and um, the, the thing registers what your brain waves were. But what they also did was, just to be sure, they said, okay, the second you decide what number it is, before you even hit the button, note the time on the screen. Right? So let's say you're going you're gonna to choose a number between 1 and 10, you choose 3. The second you choose 3, note the time, right? in tens, cent, seconds and tens of seconds. What was weird was, now the computer couldn't tell you exactly, we're not that good, uh, at least I hope we're not that good, at telling you exactly what number it was, but the computer knew when you were going to pick the number. And it knew 8 seconds before you picked it. Which is impossible, right? Because at that point, you're talking, it can't. Because meaning, literally, you, it, it made, the computer even knew way before, extreme before. And that screams, again, free will versus predestination. Of course, science doesn't believe in predestination, which meant that you already picked the number. Wait, are we talking about, like, fatalism? Oh, yeah. Wait, meaning, as opposed to meaning, determinism. Meaning there is no, you, you've already, you're, I'll steal a line from The Matrix, which I love, um, uh, when the, the oracle said, when Neo said, I, I, I can't make that choice. She goes, you've already you, made, you've already yeah, made yeah, that yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're just here to understand it. Yeah, and that's what this was saying. Yeah. It's saying, look, because it makes, it, again, I don't want to get into weird, weird stuff. But that's <laughs> where, um, oh, by the way, I'm Mark. Hi, nice, 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 nice to meet you. <laughs> so hey, where, yeah, where, it gets weird, so where it gets weird <laughs> is, is that you're talking about, think about this, a virtual world versus a virtual movie. So a virtual world is great and all, but it still uses up a huge amount of resources. It's not the ultimate inefficiency. What would be the ultimate inefficiency is, because virtual world, you know, you're randomly doing stuff. You think you're doing stuff in real time, and you're interacting. I can go over there. I can do this. Well, virtual movie, you pick the path ahead of time. Therefore, you only have to build that world in that tunnel. And then, well, assuming, you know, and maybe you interact with other people, maybe you don't. Well, again, I don't even want to get into NPCs. That's a whole other thing. But that is way more efficient than just building, you know, a random interactive world. And that's what that experiment screamed at. It said, oh, yeah, by the way, there is no free will. And, of course, the other science is like, well, you're doing it wrong. It's like eight seconds. You're not doing it wrong. That's just spooky. Yeah. So there you go. Wait, it's more efficient. You're saying it's more efficient to have a map It's more out. efficient to, to map it out ahead of time. Uh, I'll give you the director uh, scenario which is um, you're a director of a movie 
and you direct it. You have complete creative control, like Orson Welles style, right? You, you have total <laughs> control. Producers are not yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah. You make it exactly the way you want. Every scene, the music, uh, all the cuts, the editing, George Lucas style. I mean, you, you've got complete creative control. And then just before the movie comes out, you bump your head on the kitchen counter and you have amnesia and you forget you ever made the movie. Then you watch the movie. For everybody else, it's like, oh, yeah, it's a freaking movie. But for you... Sorry. Oh, it's all right. No, it's okay. But for you, it's the greatest thing ever because every... It's like, wow, this it clicks with your head. It's like I would have... Everything makes sense to you in that movie. You made all the decisions. like... It's perfect. It's the perfect thing I've ever seen on film. What's the difference between that and, you know, again, it's something we haven't come up with with our technology yet. The closest we've come is just interactive realities. But imagine if you could preload it. But like, what, 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 what is the end game? Okay, let's say there's the... <laughs> hey, you guys want to get into the weird stuff. I'm the, throwing yeah, no, weird no, stuff. But this is, the weird, this is what our podcast is really about. Oh, no, okay. but wait, wait. It's all the weird shit. But so within the Flat Earth <laughs> movement, though, is there, is there Nobody many talks that believe about that. in the virtual world? Because I, I don't think I've come across that. Yeah. No, they, well, no, because there's no point in bringing up the virtual world. Because virtual worlds don't mean anything if you're in it. Virtual worlds only have any perspective if you're, if, like if you're on the outside it, yeah. looking in. And then it's like, you know, which is why the Matrix works so well, because you were looking both inside and yeah, outside yeah, of the virtual world. But if you're inside the virtual world and you, you're stuck in it, there's nothing you can do anyway. So but the best you can hope for... It still offers a kind of, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just interesting. But, like, there's, it also provides, if you have the virtual world, it provides an infinity within a finite model. Of, like, so this is a finite model. Right. This, this is somewhat infinite. The yes. globe. Yes. So you've still uh, got structure. that infinite. So, but if yeah, you put yeah, it in a virtual yeah. system, it, yeah. it, it, it still it embodies that. Yeah. All yeah. it does yeah. is yeah. it doesn't make it um, limited with the exception of it just it gives you another stepping stone. So instead of like, I mean, technically, I think of it this way. Yeah, it's, it's infinite. But how far do you have to travel to get to the nearest star in this, like four light years? It's freaking impossible, you know, you know with our technology. Yeah. Versus this... It's like, okay, now you've got a challenge, but it's much, much closer. So it's still potentially infinite, but it's left up to you again, your imagination. What's outside the dome? Imagine, I know, a whole other way of thinking, and that is you tell everybody early, well, you don't have stories about Star Wars and Star Trek and Stargate. Then the imagination is, okay, what's outside of the dome? And people just start making up just yeah. all sorts of stuff, and then the imagination goes from there. Unfortunately, you can't do it with this because the physical reality is people would still just completely obsess over the dome. You know, they would still be like, okay, we, you know, they would dedicate huge amounts of resources to trying to break out, which they did for a while, from 58 to 62, and then they gave up. They said, ah, screw it, we're not going to... But, you know, I still think the governments are still trying. So you try from 58 to 62 with atomic weapons, and then it's like, okay, well, brute force is... What, to break it. the dump? Yeah, to break the dump. That's, that was what they did. They fired weapons straight up for four years. Most people don't know. And it's like, okay, well, that's not going to work. What else you got? Uh, how about high frequency? Harp. Oh, yeah, that's good. Let's, let's try to, like, you know, kind of, yeah, try to yeah. shatter it. It's like, no, that's not working very well. What else you got? Oh, I got this CERN project. That's going to take a while. Maybe we could just open a gate and just kind of walk through. And, and so I think secretly behind the scenes, I think every government at the highest level is working on these little projects. Because if you can get out, well, then it's the ultimate, which is, okay, what do you do? You know? But so if then, if we manage to get out, then we'll... Will the governments reveal that, okay, the Earth well, is flat, and now we've gone out of the dome? Would you? I mean, then it comes down to... Then what are we doing? Have, no, 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 no. Going, then it comes down to in, intentions. That is men doing sinister things all the time, which is, look, you can't take everybody with you. You know that. So what do you do? If you can get out, what do you do? You, you'd probably do no different than you would with Stargate. Stargate, a wonderful um, show in, in the concept, but you got to remember that everything in Stargate that ever, ever happened was absolutely top secret. None of the public ever, ever knew it. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to go to this planet. I mean, that's what they did. They got off world. They found the, the solution to traveling light years with wormholes. And every mission that they ever took, then general population completely missed the plot, which was, oh, yeah, by the way, no one ever knew it happened. Yeah. It never, ever happened. Yeah. So, yeah, could they be trying but, to get out? Sure. Why so not? the dome only exists for a uh, high pressure, to create a high pressure, pressure system, right? Yeah, but so, so is the yes. dome... Is, yeah. the well, dome that, is and, not, that and, of course, to keep people from just running away. So the dome is man-made, or, man -made, or is it which, not man-made? No, no, it's not man-made. It's, it's made by... Oh, well, okay, that's, that's the other question, philosophical question, which is... Uh, are we no, 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 a, are we that? are we a box of kittens or are we a box of that should be protected or, or are we, are we the evil a ones? box of scorpions yeah, that yeah, should yeah. never <laughs> ever be let out ever? Yeah, and, why, like why I don't know why, where the dome 
comes from? Why like not why just make have it? this floating disc in space? What? Uh, there you go again. Uh, you, Sorry, you, not uh, space. No, no, yeah, no, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. Again, which there is, is no like, space. okay, why, why space? Yeah, right. there is no why, space. Why, okay. why make space? And that is, if you can, if you can simulate space, then why do you have to have space? You don't. The, the, okay, no space, but seems, why a dome? It seems quite claustrophobic. Why not? It? No, but that's how they create the pressure. Yeah, so it is the pressure. That's what we're... Well, the pressure is a one, one aspect of it, sure, but you can also use it. It doesn't seem that it's on the No, no, I mean, it's fine. I mean, pressure is, is okay, we'll use pressure as the greatest one. Um, but you also, it's multi, multifaceted, so you can also use the dome to project stars and planets. Okay. And yeah, interact like, with the sun and the moon and all the other fun stuff. But also to keep people from coming which, in which or I, going out. I mean... I didn't. Because we don't, we don't seem to understand the. Yeah, if but you're we're kind of doing away with a lot of the laws of phys physics. Yeah, what but physics? Are we, exactly? we should, but are we discussing it in more of a metaphysical way? I don't know. What if you're not, if, <laughs> exactly. Like, what if are we doing? If you're in a planetarium, <laughs> do you? And I've had people ask me this all the time. I go, they say, "Oh yeah, by the way, when I go to a planetarium, um, or, or you, if you're in a planetarium, can you see the moons of Jupiter? Yes, I can. Can you land on them? No, you cannot. Why not? Well, because it's just a projection. The difference is, I. But where's the projector? That's what, in this? Well, like in the planetarium, we know where the projector is. Right? Yeah. But where, yeah, in this, yeah. Where well, not where you can find it, that's obvious. I mean, yeah, in, in so a planetarium. It has to be outside. hidden away, right? But it's inside. Like, if this is a dome, the dome only exists to, for stars to be projected if the projector is inside. Actually, yeah, so the well, projector is okay, definitely okay. inside. Not, Okay, if we're talking about technology, oh, right. I, I don't want I mean, no, no. Let's let's keep I this simple. It could be outside, so, it let's, like for example, I mean, twenty years ago we didn't even have HD television. So, what sort of and what what we at? What four K, eight K now? Okay, when, how long will it take us to make a million K television sets? And how long would it take to make them so paper thin that you could build them into a ceiling? Probably not that long. Compared to them, whoever they, they are, the builders, they have tons of technology. Imagine showing an HD television to somebody 200 years ago. It'd freak them out because it looks so freaking real. So, ah, so the dome you don't actually think is clear. It's, it's like a plasma sheet. Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's clear. It's just clear on this just because. Yeah, just so we can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, it would look more like a... Something. Well, here. It, the dome would be more like um, this, but I don't use this anymore because um, it just confused people. Oh, wow. Okay. Something like that. And I only put the top on it just this is to... beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, that's definitely so that's cool, but people right? have to look on the inside of it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And so it's... Uh, and that was made for, by, maybe for, by some Australian guy. So, so, so is, is believing in the flat earth... Yeah. You're, like, you're just like, succumbing to this idea that we have no free will anymore and everything is controlled by... No, 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 no. no flat earth has nothing to do with the free will thing. It is just... It answers one of the, several of the age-old questions. Who built it? Why are we here? Where are we going? Why are we here? And where are we going? <laughs> really? You just, just want to throw that out there right now? Okay. Yeah, well, well I, don't, I don't understand what I'm living on, but why am I living on this? Why are you um, living on this? I can only give you my opinion. I mean, I'm not going to okay. try. Uh, but if you want me to question the, the meaning of life, I'll tell you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, give you the, um, I'll, I'll give you this, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, um, yeah. What, what, ta what time is this thing supposed to end, anyway? How much is left in the session? Do we know? I think uh, at six. Is it six? It's 25 past five. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. okay, 25 yeah. past five. Okay. okay. All right. well, I mean, if we can get the meaning of life and how we came here, then we're like... Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. We, don't need, we can give up on most of our lives. Yeah, 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 All right, yeah, fine. Yeah. I'll give you the meaning of life. You ready? <laughs> now we know what we're living on. Because I, I, <laughs> I have given this some significant thought. Okay. Which is this. Uh, I believe that the most um, uh, valuable asset, commodity, in the universe is novelty. Bear with me. Here's why. Let's say outside of this world, and you can give other names to it. Let's say outside of this world... Um, is an unlimited universe, right? And let's say that's where you started. And I'm a genie. I'll be a blue genie for you. And, I, and, and of course, I say, hey, I'll give you three wishes. And, of course, since you're sharp, one of your wishes is your child now. Come on, we've all done this in school. Three wishes, what's your first wish? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. What's, uh, yeah. Uh, Answer it, somebody... Invisibility. More wishes, more absolutely. Wishes. Yeah, unlimited wishes. unlimited no, wishes. No. That's right. Excellent. No, that's, that's, that's not... That's I thought it was going to ask for I was going to ask for money, actually. Yeah. Don't ask for money. Uh, really? Yeah. For really? Money. I'm quite poor right that's now. Ridiculous. No, no, don't do that. No, you always... No, ask for a, a bigger overdraft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> your, your wish... More debt. That Sorry, would, more that debt. Would be a more debt. It's like, I want to increase my credit. Yeah, exactly. No, I need my credit score to come down. No, but more wishes would just drive me fucking crazy. 
Okay, my, yeah, anyway, my that, point, that my point, you're going you're gonna to go with this. Okay, so, and of course, your first wish is always going to be uh, perfect health, immortality, um, master of time and space, and there's all sorts of fun stuff. You know, go for the superhero shit right away. So you get unlimited wishes, and you start just piling them on, right? Everything you can think of, everything you ever wanted to buy. Amazing how many people go for that right away. Uh, <laughs> you, you redesign yourself. You make yourself the ultimate avatar version of yourself. And then you hang out with every cool person. In fact, you even walk through history. You hang out with authors and, and famous people. And you, it's like you, do, you build mm-hmm. cities and you build empires. Jesus. And you spend thousands of years doing this. Well, the problem is I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs. You know, I'm the genie. I'm going... I'm quite a bored right now. Yeah. Well, no, because eventually you're going to keep, eventually you keep coming back to me. And you're going to be like, okay, you know, because I have to make suggestions. It's like, okay, what do I do now? It's like, okay, fine. You're going to learn every recipe that's ever been made ever. You're going to be the best cook in the world. And then I send you off. Like, okay, you're going to sail the world, and you're going, to do, you're going to do all these fun things. And eventually, sooner or later, uh, you're, you're going to get bored. Yeah. You're going to get really, really bored. And, uh, and in fact, it's the um, I can, uh, 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 quote I came up with is, I can't tell you what your first wish is, but I can always tell you what your last wish is. And eventually you're going to come to me and it's like, die. okay, what do I do? Well, no. You know, you want to die, but you can't die. Or I, mean, I suppose you could go that, but most people don't. I mean, most people yeah. do. And remember, also, he's already wished to be immortality. Remember, remember yeah, you're, but you can, yeah, over, you can, you can, you can override <laughs> that. It's like, okay, I need to override my immortality. But, then, but most people, it's like, no, there's got to be another way. And I say, okay, fine, I make a suggestion to you. And I say, um, there is something you can do. And that is, you can reinvent yourself. It's like, oh, tell me more. So I say, okay. <clears throat> I can give you a door that you can walk through over there, and through it, you are going to have some things you're going to have to suffer through. Limited lifespan, amazing amounts of conflict. Doesn't matter how rich, how powerful, how beautiful, how talented you are, you are going to be complaining pretty much all the time <laughs> about everything. You have a hundred room mansion, you complain about the sermons. You have a five hundred thousand dollar car, it's in the shop all the time. So on, athletes, you know, get slower, people get older, and so on and so on. And this is going to happen. It's like, how long do I have to stay there? I don't know. 70 years, 80 years, give or take. But it's going to go by really fast. Remember, you just spent several thousand years figuring out what was going to go on. And uh, you say, what's the catch? And I say, the catch is, is that you can't remember that you even asked me this question. you just got to go. And then you think about it. And I say, you know what, no pressure. And you're like, oh, my God, that sounds horrible. And then you go off and do something. And you come back. And eventually, eventually, you come back. And then I say, all right, the door's right there. And you go through the door. And you end up here. And that's in this is a world of almost 99% pure conflict. Again, I mean, this world, of all the things in this world, this world is entropy. This world is just, I mean, there is no, nothing. Again, I've looked at every famous person you can think of, and everyone's got something to complain about, always. And, but what, what, what would that serve? And that is you gain perspective. At the end, after all this torturous stuff, which, you, which is why, by the way, it answers one of those age-old questions, which is, why does God let bad things happen to good people? It's like, he didn't let anything. You volunteered. You signed the waiver. You walked through the door. And probably a second door afterwards. Kind of like the amusement park ride thing. Where you stand in line for the roller coaster you know is going to suck. And then, even then, you still, it's like you take the ticket, you stand in another line, and you have every chance in the world to back out. No. God has nothing to do with the blame on this. And that's it. And then once, uh, once you, again, one way to get in. The foggy birth thing, where it's people like, where was my first memory? Find people that's like, absolutely know their first memory. A million ways to leave. And when you leave, you go back, and then the whole thing becomes cyclical. Short little thing. So yeah, novelty. The oh, biggest, the biggest I mean, thing. But then maybe flat novelty. earth is just because we're bored of the fucking globe. Yeah, <laughs> and then eventually no, we'll become bored of no, flat earth. No, no, because yeah. out because we'll I be, because yeah. out, flat earth was the initial thing. Because yeah. outside it's of here, it's cyclical, right? Yeah. Be, because yeah. outside of here, I call it. Um, I built a big chart about this once. Uh, <laughs> uh, called well, no, I did back in the ni- late 1990s. I called it static world theory because it always bugged me that virtual worlds that we made had no entropy. That's the big difference, by the way, between simulated worlds. And, um, and this world is that there's no entropy. Like the chair in a simulated world never, it just sits there. It's always a chair, right? It never gets old, never wears out, you yeah. know, it never smells bad. It's always a freaking same chair. Yeah. Whereas this, entropy is always working on things. Things rust, things rot, rain falls, things erode. So, um, but outside of this world, yeah, I think it's, what I call it the, um, what do I call it? I call it the near perfect. A giant room that's, you know, imagine like this, you know, compared to this, it's just a giant room with unlimited possibilities, uh, which is powered literally by imagination. And, but again, even imagination, you think, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. It's like, yeah, it is, but 
Eventually, you tap out. It's a gas gauge, like anything else. So, Flat Earth is taking a lot of my imagination right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you asked, so I, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked that Dude, question. I love that as, as an answer. Yeah, I know. I think I, that's, I do that's think novelty. I definitely think life. novelty drives a lot of our life. Yeah, but it's, it's I how think we live all of our lives. Nostalgia lives. of the two. Oh, oh, yeah, oh I'm yeah. sorry. For one sure. more thing. One more thing, real quick, sure. before I go, which is this. I'll give you. We'll end on like a thud, which is like a like the South Park reference. Which is uh, South Park, if you ever mo- followed the show. Yeah, yeah. They actually had an episode called Ur- um, Earth Cancelled, which was that looking is my at. It's so good. It's like a reality show. Which yeah, is a reality Earth, show. Earth was a reality show. Yeah, yeah. And the problem was the ratings were slipping. <laughs> yeah, and so exactly. eventually, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. they had to, because of the lack of novelty, yeah, yeah. and they had to close it down. Well, I think, again, every civilization has about 5,000 years, give or take, before they run out of novelty. Think of everything we've done recently, over just over the last 23 years. We have run out, we have tapped so, out. So God gets bored as well. So God's like, uh uh-uh, uh, motherfucker. Well, yeah, maybe, but maybe I mean, that's it's why not, it's Trump not, and Brexit and everything because it's yes, the novelty. But yes, along those lines. I mean, think of all the remakes yeah, of remakes be, of remakes. Yeah. Think of it, uh, well, uh, honestly, you can look this up if you want. We tapped out music, you know, pure music years and years ago, literature years and years ago, I mean, centuries ago probably. Um, and like even mainstream movies. The best year in movies, and I challenge anyone, was 1999, 20 years ago was the best year in movies. And you can look it up. Maybe it was because all the producers didn't think the Y2K would be like, yeah. oh my God, it's going to burn down. But <laughs> all the best the movies... The, it was the great... Yeah, it was the year The Matrix <laughs> came out. All the greatest movies, um, the, the sheer content level was never higher in 20 years. We're running... We've run out. We've tapped out. We've run out of ideas. And so I think that maybe this is part of the system itself. It's like, all right, let's auger this thing into the ground and... I mean, honestly, Donald Trump is president, really? He's a reality like, television star. <laughs> it's a good novelty. But what's the, what's the like, uh, the, so if, like, God's designing things, yeah. and he's, like, what is, what, is the, what is the purpose of Project Earth? No, but, I mean, he... he well, that's just it. Just I, to create I, the, how, how far do you want me yeah, to go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Like, I mean, what does this have to do with Flat Earth? Like, I feel like I think he you've convinced us preacher. too much that we're just, yeah, we're just no, treating you as God. God. No, look, I, I, I will not... Okay, I try, no, no. I try to live one world at a time. It's, I think yeah, that's exactly. what we talk about, about all the time. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you the mind of God, but I can say that when it comes... It appears to me that, yes, not only is it a cyclical novelty thing for us, but also maybe a novelty thing for him. Yeah, or maybe, her maybe, or whatever. Maybe I, that I is, just yeah. love that as an idea. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, but I think that is... It it, well, okay, I'll, I'll, take you, I'll take it one step further just for you, just to see, see how it flies, and that is, what <laughs> if, what if... So you think of a you know, giant, if I had a whiteboard, I could draw it. So at the top, giant G, which nobody looks for, because the, the big G, I, I don't think that, that God even completely knows where he is. Because eventually, the near perfect, <laughs> wherever, wherever all the unlimited realities are, but each one of these has what I call little g over the top. God starts out as a child, a splinter of God that has to learn as it goes along as well. So not only do we have to evolve, God what, has to. but yes, what, yes the, the splinter of God also has to evolve. And I know that sounds a little weird, but what are we talking about here? And which is why you know, maybe some of the old stories about, you know, it's like, why did God do all these horrible temper tantrum, tantrum things back a long time ago? I was like, oh, maybe because God was a child. <laughs> <laughs> here, yeah, yeah. anyway, here yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and this could be the spawn of God, right? There's a bigger consciousness. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So yeah. that's kind of. So we sussed the universe. The what? We sussed the universe, right? Oh no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, no, no, not the universe. Sorry. Well, I mean, <laughs> part, parts of it enough enough to keep us, you know, it, keep no, I, keep I, going for a long time. I really like. I think I learned a lot. I like this. I really, I really like your meaning of life. Actually, well, I think you. that really resonates. Maybe more than the flat Earth stuff, but that. Uh, it's it's aspect. one of my yeah, things. But, the flat earth is, is, is well, for you yeah, guys, I, I, for you guys, I'm willing to talk to about. But yeah, remember, most of the people I talk to, you know, they don't. Yeah. So, they want the flat earth stuff. Yeah, they yeah. they just want they want pure flat earth, and it's like well, again, that's that's where your starting point, and eventually you work your way up. But for me, that was the ultimate, the ultimate thing. It's like, okay, what would I do? You know, why why do things happen the way they are? And it's like, okay, maybe it is cyclical. Because if you, ha- if you did it that way, oh my God, you could keep going for a long, long time. Yeah. Of course, there's that sheer moment with the exception of one sheer moment of terror. Everything else is great, which is the, the moment you walk through that door. You're like, oh my God, I have to give up what I am right now. Yeah. But I'll come back. It'll be fine, right? And in fact, you could even do like, um, you remember the movie uh, Total Recall? Where, um, where you gave yourself a message and began. Yeah, 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 it's like, exactly. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, it's like a message. It's, it was like, oh yeah, by the way, you know, you've already done this, but you know, here we go. You yeah. know, back and forth time travel stuff. So. No, thank you so much. <laughs> for, uh, All right, I'm done. My voice is wiped out. This was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.